Hi, and welcome back to the next in our series of videos looking at container security fundamentals. In the last video, what we looked at was how containers are just processes and some of how we can interact with them. So in this next video, what we're going to do is dive a bit more into the details about one of the ways in which containers are isolated, which is Linux namespaces, and how they work. If you remember this diagram from last time, it was basically showing the different layers of isolation that are used by containers to isolate them from the underlying host and from each other. We've got a number of them here, um, but the one we want to look at more today is Linux namespaces. So Linux namespaces essentially are used to provide an isolated view of resources on a host. At the moment, there are eight different Linux namespaces available. Of those, there are six, which is the MNT namespace, PID, NET, IPC, UTC, and cgroups, which are enabled by default when using Docker containers. We also have the user namespace, which can be enabled, but isn't by default. And then we have the time namespace, which is the newest namespace and isn't actually available inside containers as yet. What we want to do is look a little bit about how these namespaces work and also how they isolate resources and how we can kind of interact with them using some standard Linux tooling. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a bit of a look at how to use namespaces and also how to actually interact. And we'll talk a bit more in detail about the mount namespace. So let's go to the demo. And what we've got here is we've got our standard Linux host running Docker. So we're going to start off by looking a little bit about how namespaces work. How do we interact with namespaces? So what we'll do is we'll use the command lsns, which basically lists namespaces on the machine. When we run this, what you can see is in the columns we have here with the nprox column, and this is the number of processes using a given set of namespaces. Now you can see from that, that the vast majority of the processes on this machine are using the same namespaces, which is what we'd expect. Most of them don't isolate the different namespaces away. And you can see all our different namespaces in the left there time, cgroup, ped, user, UTS, IPC, net, and mount. You can also see that even before we run any Docker containers, some processes are already taking advantage of Linux namespaces. You can see here that some of the systemd daemons will isolate their mount namespace and also their UTS namespace. So it's actually something that's used. It's not just a container thing, like most of how containers work. It's not just for containers, but containers make use of these Linux features. What we'll do now is we're going to run a new Docker container. And we'll just run a standard Nginx container. And then once we've got that run, we will rerun our lsns command. What you can see here, which is different, is down the bottom. You see a set of new namespaces have been created for our Docker container. Now, Docker does this behind the scenes, but what it's basically doing is putting this these Nginx processes inside their own namespaces. So they only have an isolated view of the resources running on the machine. And you can see here, mount, UTS, IPC, PID, and net. And then down the bottom, we've got secret. So these are the namespaces that are enabled by default. Like I said, user and time, which are available on the host, aren't enabled by default. So um, that's essentially how you can interact and look at namespaces. Let's take a little bit more of a detailed look at one of the namespaces in question, which is the mount namespace. So to do that, what we're going to do is first we need to know um, what the uh, process ID of our container is, because we're going to use Linux process tools to interact with this container. So what we'll do is we'll do Docker inspect, and we'll inspect the web server container and try and get the process ID for that container. And what we get back here is, this. in this case, it's process ID 2607. That'll change depending on you know, how many processes you've got running on your machine at any given time. Now, now that we know that, we can actually look and see how the name, mount namespace has been set up for that container. To do that, we're gonna use a command called find mount 2607. So what we can do is we can say, show me the mounts for the process ID 2607. And this gives us all the information about the mount namespace for that process. You can see here that the root file system is actually being mounted in from varlib docker overlay 2. 
This is kind of an important general point for security, actually, which is the varlib docker file system or directory is where all of the files for containers, for Docker containers, will live by default. So controlling access to that and to an extent auditing access to that directory are quite important because everything, all your containers, images, all your actual running containers, all of that information lives inside that directory and in some subdirectory of it. That might change depending on your exact implementation, but you can use something like FindMount to find out where that is. In our case, it's the default location, which is varlib docker. So this gives us quite a lot of information about the different mount. Uh, mounted file systems into this container. We can see here that proc has been mounted in, and we can see here that um, various different files have been mounted in from the underlying host. And this is all done by Docker, um, but we can look and see how it works by looking at find mount. We can also use, um, we can also use uh, uh, look in the proc file system to get a bit of this information as well. So what we can do is we can say sudo cat slash proc, and then our process ID, in this case 2607, and mount info. This is going to present us a lot of the same information as we saw with find mount, but just in a slightly different format, and you get a little bit more detail on, on, on some of it. The main thing we can see was different, or it's a bit easier to kind of see here, is you can see all of the different directories that actually make up the root mount of this container. And they're all the different directories in, are all in overlay 2 in that varlib doc directory. And that's actually to do with how containers work and how, uh, how their file systems are put together. But all of them basically live somewhere inside varlib docker. And we'll go into a little more detail when we talk about overlay file systems in a later episode. So another thing we can do in order to interact with our mount namespace is we can actually use a program called nsenter. nsenter is a really useful utility because what it lets us do is interact with different Linux namespaces and actually like sort of run commands in the namespace of a process. So what we can do here is we can say uh, sudo nsenter and then we'll do minus minus target and we should have a head still on the command line. We want to enter the mount namespace. So we'll say minus minus mount, and then we'll say ls flat. And what we get back is we get back the file system for our container. This is the root file system of our Nginx container. And you can do this with anything which uses mount namespaces on a host, but in our case, it's fairly useful and interesting to be able to use it for containers. Because this means if you want to inspect a container on a machine, you don't necessarily need to use Docker tooling, you can use something like nsenter. So that was a little bit about our mount namespaces and how they work. What we're going to do in the next episode is we're going to go into a little bit more depth about some of the other namespaces that are used by Linux containers and how, again, we can interact with them and use them. So please do come back for that episode. If you'd like some more details on some of what we talked about today, please do go along to our Security Lab site where you'll find our blogs which talk about this in a little bit more detail. Thanks.